Hey, what's going on everyone? This is your boy Quillen Black QBanks on Instagram. Um, today we're gonna be answering some very, very in-depth questions. Like I wanna actually spend time to answer a bunch of questions that my followers on IG actually sent me. Um, I chose about 15 questions in total that I'm gonna actually cover like right now. And yeah, so I feel like it should be very, very insightful for people that's actually getting into trading and um, is wondering about certain situations that you might come across and how you could handle it based off of, you know, my experience and whatnot. So um, let's get it started. Would you ever consider in my position quitting your job and taking the leap? If yes, what steps would you take prior to quitting? If no, what is missing for you to feel good about taking the leap? What would you change about me and my situation personally and financially to better set up my success? Okay, so I feel like this. Um, I have a friend that actually told me this. He says, when your craft or your business needs you more than your job, that's when the right time is to actually quit your job. Because think about it, at the end of the day, if you quit your job, they're gonna hire somebody else within like about a, a week or so. So at the end of the day, you're still just a number at your job. Um, if you wanna actually you know, take full control of your life, you have to actually take that leap of faith and you know, really, really trust in what you actually are trying to do because if you don't, I feel like you're gonna feel comfortable at a job and, and in no time, you know, it's been two, three, four, five years versus actually taking that leap of faith and then actually going about your journey from there. But if you don't actually just take that leap of faith, um, it's gonna be very, very hard to actually step away from that job. But before you step away from that job, you have to have some kind of savings as far as some kind of, um, let's say three, four months worth of, of bills. That could, that could include rent, that could include insurance, that could include um, car payments, that could include anything that you pretty much pay for every single month. I feel like make sure you save up enough money so even when you quit your job, you could pretty much you know last for three, four, five months with your savings, all right? Because when I actually quit Target, I had about like seven, eight thousand dollars, which means that I had maybe four, like four, four, four or five months worth of bills. So at, at, at the same time, I focused a fucking lot. I had 24 hours in my day versus about let's say 16 hours to actually dedicate to my craft. So at the same time, like I actually um, spent. 24 hours a day, making sure that, yo, it's like, I have to make this shit work because time is running out. You know what I'm saying? I have only three months now, only two months now, only one month now to actually get my shit right. So um, I feel like it's, it's a big step to take, but at, at the end of the day, you have to actually um, sit there and think like, is your job more important than your own, um, you know, skill set that you want to build outside? Because remember, your, your job makes you have a cap income you are on somebody else's time, not on your own time, and you shouldn't be actually trying to work towards your craft at, at, at work because that's not on your time, that's on the business time. So um, I'll actually just make sure that I have my situation, or like my financial situation um, sorted out before I take that leap of faith. Because once you do, um, you know, it gets kind of scary, but once you figure out how to actually go about things, it's a very, very smooth process. Question: Would you bother with FTMO or would you just build your own capital? If yes, what are your tips to pass the challenge? 10% per month is normally considered a great month and hard to achieve without paying risk limits. If no, what repels you from the prop firm row? Okay, um, for one, if you could get capital from a company that offers capital, why not? Like, I don't, like there's not really like a lose-lose situation here. It's more like a win-win. Um, maybe because a company is giving you funding based off of your current skill. Um, you know, back when I first st started trading, like 2014, 2015, um, FTMO wasn't even there. So new traders that's actually upcoming and then they have the skill, but they just don't have the capital, which is um, pretty common. Um, if you have the opportunity, then just, just take it. I, I see nothing negative about um, enrolling for FTMO. If you need capital or if you need funding of some sort, knowing that you have the skill set to actually make something happen. Um, if you if you don't want to, if you actually have too much ego now, right? This is where the ego comes in. Like, if you feel like you have too much ego to sign up for FTMO, um, which is like a funding site for you know people that are starting to trade and whatnot. Um, I think they offer up to like a hundred thousand um, dollars in a trading account. Um, you have to pass like a certain test or some kind of like that. Um, I know a lot of people that, that actually do it. A lot of people in Wall Street Academy actually t um, take advantage of it. But um, 
if you have the opportunity to take it, if you are gonna stick to your ego the entire time, I feel like it's gonna like hold you back into a potential way on how to actually get out of your situation. Someone who's been here done this to give me just a little guidance and direction, and I feel like I can achieve great things. That's basically the whole question, Q. I appreciate you or your team reading this. Definitely. If you pick me, I'm gonna follow your advice to a T. Definitely. I want you to stay in contact with me because I swear I'm gonna make one million soon hey, and it. do it using your advice. When that happens, I'm gonna buy a second pista. <laughs> never miss the goal. Definitely. Until someone has hit. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, I love their mentality. I love that they believe in themselves because um, even like on the Wall Street Academy book, it says, believe you're great before anyone else does, which is probably the most important thing that you have to do in your trading journey. Like you shouldn't let someone tear you down or tear your dreams down based off of what they think that you're capable of. Um, so the way how that person thinks, definitely um, they could accomplish it, but at the same time, everybody can, can talk. Everybody can say motivational words and, and, and whatnot, but are you gonna be that person that's gonna take action from what I'm saying? Because I'm actually taking time to tell you like, yo, this is what to fucking do. Um, take advantage of it, you know what I'm saying? Take action based off of what I'm telling you because I've been there. Like, I, I've been at a job, I've been, you know, working um, friggin' uh, 40, 50 hours an entire week, getting paid $300, like, I've been there, you know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm literally telling you this from experience. All you gotta do is just take fucking action, listen to a person that has already experienced that side of things and has gotten out of it. Um, so that that's what it comes down to, just taking action based off of my advice. All right, so thank you for your question. Number two, uh, I made a transition to full-time trader about a year ago. I'm looking to move at the end of this year. I generate about three times my desired budget for rent, as I know most places require. My question is, as a full-time trader slash entrepreneur, how do you go about showing proof of income with apartment or condos? Do you just show previous bank statements, tax returns, create LLC, or etc.? I've heard mixed reviews where some place shy away from the job title trader because it's gambling in their eyes or not a fixed income. Thanks. Love to hear your response. Okay. Um, for one, never, ever, ever, ever say that you're a trader. Don't ever tell banks that you're a trader. Don't ever tell um, an apartment complex or a condo, a condo complex that you're a trader because a lot of people don't really understand what a trader is. Um, you could say investor, you could say um, um, con consulting, you, you could say a bunch of other stuff, but do not say trader because at the end of the day, like trading is, um, they look at it as a form of gambling. We know what it is, but um, they're never gonna understand, you know what I'm saying? So don't even try to even like, you know, bust your head, even trying to make them understand it because it's not gonna work. The best way on how to actually go about that is bank statements, bank statements, bank statements, bank statements. A lot of apartment complexes, like they ask for, you know, um, let's say three, four, five, six months of consistent income, all right? Um, and then you're gonna have to pay three times the amount for the rent. So like you gotta cover like three, four months of, of rent to even get qualified for that. Um, you can also show a tax return as well. Like that means that if you're actually organized like how you should be, um, you could actually show a tax return. And the best way on how to actually go about that, um, in my opinion, um, you know, everyone's gonna have their own way on how to, how to actually go about the whole LLC thing. Um, you could start a business account, right? Start a business account, withdraw your profits, um, into that business account and pretty much pay yourself based off of that. So like, let's say if, if you're making $5,000 a month trading, right? Pay yourself um, a, a bi-weekly salary of maybe um, $1,000 or even $1,200 or $1,500 just so they, they see that you're working for a company, the company you, you own, but it looks better on paper knowing that you actually work for an LLC and you're actually getting paid um, on the regular. So I feel like that's the best way on how to, on how to actually go about it. If you go about it the opposite way, which is just one account that you're just pretty much throwing funds into and pretty much try to use that as, as your bank statements, it's not gonna work out because they don't see that as um, a reliable source. So definitely go the business route, open up a business account, um, sign up for a W-2, which is pretty much, you're gonna be an employee of your business and then pay yourself a bi-weekly salary um, just so you actually can show that you're actually getting paid from your company. So it's like a person I'm working for, let's say, Walmart and then they're paying employees based off of working at Walmart like you just own the company itself and you're paying yourself based off of that overall income so 
broker account into your business account and then pretty much pay yourself through that business account into your checking account. That's the best way on how to actually go about that when it comes to getting an apartment or a condo. Um, when it comes to getting a house now, a house is a whole different ball game. A house, you actually need you know, that, um, that, that five, six years worth of um, tax returns to actually then be able to use your, your trading money as a reliable source of income. Because when they look at entrepreneurs or people that's like self-employed and, and whatnot, they don't try to work with us too much. You know what I'm saying? Because um, for them, they see our income as it could be good one year and terrible the, the next year. So it's not really as consistent, which means that you have to fucking try to work towards, you know, making more every single year, making more every single month. So they can see the growth in your income and, and they won't turn you down based off of you being a self-employed person or owning your own business and paying, and paying yourself based off of that. So that's pretty much like the best way on how to actually go about that right there. So hopefully that question helped you out and I appreciate your question. My question to you is how have you evolved and how has your circle evolved the more you see success in the markets, in business and life? I'm not worried about the grind of the charts. That's self-explanatory. If you want it bad enough, you'll work for it. Genuinely curious on how you've handled the fame slash publicity. New people coming into your life for the better or worse. Your overall atmosphere with those who have been with you since day one. And even some people you've come to know and embrace as even family members along the journey. Yeah. Thanks for all that you do, man. I'll be forever in, that, in, in your debt. Without your course, I would still be clueless in the markets. Thank you for teaching and skill. Set an opportunity achieving generational wealth. Hey, okay. Um, for one, um, I must say that if you have friends before trading, um, they should still be your friend after trading, regardless of you know how frequently you guys speak. Um, I have certain friends that at times I don't speak to for weeks and weeks and weeks, but when we actually do link up and that kind of stuff, it's all love. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's like we haven't even missed a beat, which is what a true friend is. It's not like um, they're saying damn man you don't fuck with me anymore this and that this and that this and that this and that they know that you are busy they know that that you are grinding they know that you are focused on a certain you know path that you're trying to actually succeed at so i feel like um friends wise um true friends are going to be there before the success and after the success regardless of how often you guys speak um and when it comes to um i feel like that that definitely comes with the fact that um you know i'm, I'm a person that is very very good at, at what i do um, it's what it is. It's just like a, the fact that you have to be real careful on, on who you bring into your circle because you you don't know their true intention. Like they might trying to they might be trying to leech off you for money. They might just trying to be around you for just a flex. You don't know. So I feel like you have to just be very very cautious of you know who you bring into your life, on um, what kind of energy that you're surrounding yourself with, and trying to keep a positive energy. And regardless of like you know, um, you know what kind of person comes into your life try to you know always i wouldn't say stay humble all the time because at the same, at the same time you you deserve to turn up but um just keep a close eye on a person's intentions like when like, like when they randomly come in, into your life and try to actually you know stick around people that aren't trying to you know invade your energy and 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 try to tear I tear you down behind your your back and whatnot so i feel like it's just it's a very, very iffy situation i mean i've ran into people over the years or whatnot that actually they came in and then they were negative you know what i'm saying and then they kind of fucked me up um some stole some 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 just came in and just fuck shit up or try to sabotage like what i have going on but i mean you know it's all love you know the money can be made back and cut people off quick you know once you actually have any kind of clue that person might be negative or like not good for your circle just cut them off and keep on moving honestly and like when it comes to haters um like how I, I made a post all the day on IG I was like it doesn't make sense when people hate hate when all of a sudden you have success inside the world you know what I'm saying the same kind of information that I actually use to read the charts and pretty much make my money I literally show it <laughs> like I literally have a course to pretty much teach people what I do so it's not as if I'm like holding what I like what I know back like I literally show people like yo this is what I, I um, this is what I did. You could do it too. Just follow this this flow of things, and you could literally make what I make. You know what I'm saying? Just people just don't have the patience factor to actually um you know want to stick through that journey to actually get the kind of results that they actually are looking for, because they actually just try to you know um rush the process and like rush to 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 make the kind of profits that I make, but not understanding that yo listen like I've been. 
I, I've literally, and I always say literally, 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 I've been doing this every single day since like November 2014. Like every day, like it hasn't been like one day um, most of the time that I, I don't go and look at the charts to a certain extent. You know what I'm saying? Like every single day to, to, in, in some kind of way, I'm on the charts. I'm actually trying to educate myself on some kind of candlestick analysis, fundamental analysis, um, structure, um, learn how learn how to use certain tools on the charts, pretty much try to actually put a lot of time into, into, into my craft. People have the energy to pour into video games and Fortnite and this and that, but they don't have that same kind of energy to put into trading. But knowing that this can make you money, some people don't really understand that. So I feel like um, some people just don't want it bad enough, you know, and um, you can't change a person's drive um, just by talking to them sometimes. But at, at the end of the day, like they might just think that you have a cheat code that you're not telling them, but in reality, you just put in a lot of fucking work and you have a bit more experience than the other person that they just got started. And the same way how a person is just getting started in 2020, I was just getting started in 2014. So I'm just ahead of the curve. You know, nothing different, just that I'm just years and years and years and years ahead because I was been doing this and a person was just starting this and they expect to see the same kind of results from a person that has been doing this for six years. It doesn't make sense. So I feel like just um, make sure that you understand that this is not an overnight process. Um, haters are gonna hate, it's part of the game. You know, just keep, just stay focused, keep, keep your energy positive and um, you know, pray for the people that hate. Honestly, it's just, it's, it comes with the territory. You know, new levels, new devils. That's what I say. <laughs> All right. Growing as a trader every day, I would like to hear some opinions about where can you start investing your profits and while you're growing like 10 to 20K, things like that. I would love to hear some feedback about that. Thank you so much. Okay, so first things first, um, a lot of people under the um, misconception that, you know, 10 to 20K is like like this, right? You have to be able to fucking make profit first. You have to, to be able to actually catch moves first. You have to be able to actually understand the flow of the market, being able to actually scale in orders, being able to pretty much, you know, make consistent profit to even think about 10K to 20K. So the money shouldn't even be your main focus. The main focus sh should be, do I understand the market? Do I understand the movements of the market? Do I understand um, my projections based off of like what I'm trading and looking for? Do I understand all that stuff and then the money comes second? You know what I'm saying? Once you understand all that and then you're actually making consistent profit inside a market and then you are able to withdraw and then reinvest into other, other ways, um, then you can worry about that side of things. Like with me, I like to actually reinvest my money into like Bitcoin and cryptos and that kind of stuff. So like when it comes down to it, you can make profit from the market, withdraw um, into BTC, into a crypto exchange, and then pretty much make profit based off of the movement of BTC. So like, it's like you're literally going from a market, which is the currency market and the index market and whatnot, into a market, which is crypto. So you have a an area of, um, of a profit margin that you could actually make based off of you actually investing at the right time into cryptos. So that's what like my first main, um, um, investments were as I was making profit and later in time and everything like actually help invest in, in other small businesses and that kind of stuff but like that's like way way like down the line but when it comes to just the the trading portion of things I I, I go full-fledged in, in cryptos to make more profit before I actually withdraw my profit into my, my bank account so I feel like that's the best way on how, on how to actually go about it um, some people say, hey, um, invest into real estate I feel like you should, you should definitely wait don't fucking worry about real estate until you have you know, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars to then pretty much pour into it so you could actually make some kind of significant profit, all right? Some people said that, that you could actually get into real estate with, with no money down, but a lot of times it's not really motivating. It's more motivating when, when you actually are saving up capital capital based off of your skill set that, that you actually have into the market and then pretty much save money on the outside to then reinvest into real estate if you're into that at a, a later time. But um, don't try to stress yourself to invest into real estate, even though a lot of people say that. I personally, I just started investing into like land and that kind of shit. Um, before that, I, I didn't give a fuck about real estate and that kind of shit because it's slow money. Like we can make thousands of dollars a day in, in the markets. Why would I wait freaking um, a year to make that same kind of profit on my real estate investment? It doesn't make sense. And plus you're putting up a lot more capital to make barely anything. So I feel like it's it only means something when you're actually investing a good amount into real estate. Some people might have different views on that. I personally don't really care, but 
that's how I actually go about it. I don't really like to invest in real estate unless I'm actually investing a good amount so I can make some kind of significant money off of my investment. Question five is, what advice do you have for an individual that's grown as an overall person, person and trader? Although it depends on your financial situation, do you personally think it will benefit the trader to spend as much time possible being involved? It go back testing, reading articles, journaling, watching webinars, trading, or do you feel that having a routing and, the, and dedicating time, amount of hours to the market, times the amount of time for yourself to enjoy your life, family time, which do you recommend as to what you work for? Okay, so um, first things first, about personal time. That's the beginning part of trading. You have to focus on you. You have to focus on pretty much being able to be selfish to a certain extent. And, and, and I wouldn't even call it selfish. I call it self-love because a lot of people try to invest so much time in, into other people that they don't invest time into themselves to actually be able to grow themselves. You have to be able to, you know, take some time to really think about like, hey, do I really love myself to actually, you know, distance myself a tad bit, not, not, not heavy, just enough so I could actually focus on my craft so I could actually grow in that certain skill set. You have to be able to grow as a person to become a better trader. That's like what it is. Um, like when I was about um, 21 or so, I actually moved out of my parents' house. I got a place um, and that made me actually, you know, be a little bit more secluded to focus and, and to actually really, really grind and not get distracted from outside influences and, and that kind of stuff. It could be friends, it could be family. Um, and I could focus on what I, what I have to get done to better myself. And, and if I didn't do that, I feel like, you know, I wouldn't have made as much progress as I did because I wasn't actually thinking about it as self-love. So I wouldn't call it selfish, I call it self-love. Um, if you actually care about getting to where you wanna be because you have to engulf yourself, right? No pun intended, engulf yourself into the craft, engulf yourself into webinars, engulf yourself into the information, engulf yourself into wanting to learn more about the markets, engulf yourself into back testing, engulf yourself into everything that deals with the chart so you can pretty much get more keen to like what's going on. If you don't do that, you're gonna have a lack of information, lack of understanding versus person that's pretty much focusing on that certain craft every single day. So in time, which can, can be a lot shorter than some people, um, you actually have the second nature of you know speaking on it on information understanding the information versus some people that only dedicate an hour a day or two hours a day versus a person that say yo listen i'm fucking all in and they're going 15 hours a day studying 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 back testing reading um on the charts trading and you have to be able to trade you have you have to trade to actually get get better it could be on demo it could be on live you have to to stick into the market so you can pretty much understand more of like the the market environment once you are skipping a certain season of market of market environment i feel like you actually are skipping out on certain things that you that you would have needed to actually get better as a trader so if you go two three months without trading you miss a lot of movements you you miss a lot of moves you miss a lot of ways on how the on how the market was supposed to be analyzed to actually be able to understand certain things on um predicting the the the, the direction of the market so even though you might not be trading live or might be trading small accounts and everything else at least you're trading at least you're putting time into the craft no matter if it's live or demo at least you're actually sticking around into the trading world so you so you actually experience those different market environments to actually be able to um understand how you should be trading because every single year and people that that have been trading as long as me and everything know that the markets in 2014 were a lot different than, than the markets in 2020. The markets in 2015 were a lot different than 2016. And then 2016 was a lot different than 2017. So I feel like you have to be able to actually really um, focus on just being around, putting time in, putting time into the craft to actually be able to understand more of what you might need to become a better trader in, in the future. Because me personally, I've never skipped a season of trading. I've always traded every month to a certain extent. I've never missed... Um, a lot so like when it came to like new, new market conditions and trading cryptos and trading all these new things that actually come over time i was already on game because i was already a part of you know the environment i've never skipped 
any season yet when it came to trading. So I was already on point with everything that I was doing. So I, I could pretty much grow as a trader and I could actually train my eyes better to see certain market patterns and that kind of stuff versus the person that is only trading once every single month. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I, I'll actually go about that. Um, fall in love with the process, fall in love with the craft, fall in love with, you know, wanting to learn more and fall in love with the information so you can pretty much, you know, understand things and have that second nature um, with, the with, the with the information so you could pretty much eventually, um, you know, come to a point that, you know, you could do this by the back of your hand. All right, self-love, self-love. All right, thanks for the question. To compound our profits to a seven to eight figure account in a, in a broker. For one, I doubt you're gonna do that. Oh, <laughs> I doubt you're gonna do that. Um, and it's not even like I'm, I'm hating, but at the same time, people just think of, they, they look at a compound calculator and then they're like, yo, I could take $100 and flip it to friggin' 25 million from compounding. I'm like, yo, listen, it's a good concept, it's a great concept, but um, are you even consistent enough to even do that? Are you even consistent enough to actually make back to back to back to back to back profits to even make that possible? Be able to, to make some kind of profits first before you can even think about compounding. Be able to actually be consistent enough to even, you know, think about compounding because the thing that that statement is actually trying to say, they're not taking in consideration losses. They're not taking in consideration, um, you know, market conditions. Like, they're not taking in consideration a lot of things. So I feel like you have to just um, sit there and think like, yo, am I even consistent? consistent enough to even compound an account. Personally, I feel like you should just trade what you see and like not what you think, just flow with whatever kind of profits that that um, that you make for the day or, or the week and not even stretch yourself for compounding because um, you can make a lot more money if you just pretty much just focus and um, you know base your order size off of the kinds of reliability of certain patterns and whatnot versus a person that's pretty much compounding they're up in their lot size for a certain amount of pips every single time versus a person that's pretty much not even worried about that. They'll, they'll make money along the way and um, they're not stressed about, hey, like I have to cash this amount of pips for today versus just, hey, if the move is actually still valid for a continuation pattern or, or that kind of stuff, I'm gonna hold my trade and make what I can make off of this certain move. You know what I'm saying? You're not worried about the whole compounding factor. Like it's a good concept. Don't get me wrong. It's a great concept, but um, fuck that shit, personally. Don't really care for compounding. Yeah, thanks. So you give to someone who struggles with mental aspect of trading, fear, confidence, second guessing, etc. Okay, so first things first, I feel like you have to be confident as a person. You know what I'm saying? You, you can't be a person that's, that, that's like, oh, I'm not too sure if I could do this and this and that, this and that. I'm not, I don't know. And expect to make a lot of money in trading. You have to be a person like, yo, listen, like, I know what I've been studying. I'm pretty much confident about the, the, the my, my comprehension level of the, of the information that I've been reading about and back testing and whatnot and i'm going into this market knowing that yo i'm about to fuck some shit up so you have to be confident as a person to then be confident in, inside the market you, you can't be a person that's timid or or shy and doubtful of, of what you know and expect to do good in trading you have to be um all that plus more in real life and then apply it to the actual um market life all right even like when it comes to patience same concept are you patient as a person do you um do you start driving and start cussing a person out because the light just turned green and they're not moving? Or are you a person that pretty much seen that light turn green and just wait a couple more seconds and then they actually go versus cussing them out? You know what I'm saying? So like, it's all about just, you know, thinking about that, like, are you patient and confident in real life to then be able to apply it to the charts? So if not, it's not gonna work. So I feel like definitely um, don't doubt your, your comprehension for what you've been studying every single day for at, as you should. Um, be confident about what you know, be confident about um, how you see things, be confident about you know you knowing um, a certain kind of move is possible and then actually acting towards it versus, versus seeing it and being doubtful of like, oh, this might be a losing trade, this and that, this and that, versus the person that said, yo, listen, like, let's fucking go. Let's put that order in, I'm ready. You know what I'm saying? So like, you gotta pretty much be that kind of person that is confident about you know what they've been studying to actually be able to, um, you know, take advantage of certain moves inside the market and, and profit. All right, so thanks for the question. On other financial investments other than Forex, are you more of an I'll research this thing so I fully understand it before getting in, or do you just jump in ahead first and correct yourself as you go along? Any examples of this? Yeah, um, the perfect example of that could, could be like when I started trading US 30. Um, I was actually teaching a class in California. Um, 
I had a friend that, that was trading US 30 and I was like, yo, like, what the hell is this? And then I looked it up, it's an index, blah, blah, blah. Um, as you may know, like index is based off of stocks, which means that um, it's based off of the, the, the growth in certain business, based off of the top 30 companies inside the US. Um, so I pretty much had, you know, that understanding, but I, I didn't really do super, super deep research. So when it came down to it, I started dabbling in US 30, like with super, super low lot sizes, just so I could actually get used to it. Because like when it comes to trading a new pair, you have to just be able to understand it first. You know, it's, it's like saying, um, if you just I met a girl, you don't expect to, to pretty much, you know, get to third base on the first date. You know, you gotta get to know her first. You gotta get, get to know her, see, you know, all the other stuff, because that's that's literally like like what it's like. And um, eventually you'll get to a point that, you know, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then, um, um, so it's like, I dabbled first. I dabbled first to see like what the pair was about, this and that, this and that. I actually made like $700 off of like my first trade, which was like a 0 0.01 and I'm like, yo, like, what the hell? Like, this shit is crazy. So that's when I was like, you know what? I'm interested. You know, it's kind of like saying, if you just I met a girl and then she pretty much makes you laugh and whatnot. And then you're like, you know what? I'm interested. Same concept. Um, so I was interested. And then I started getting more deep into like, hey, like what is US 30 really about? What makes it move? Um, um, when does it move and everything like that? So I could you know, learn the full dynamics of the pair so I could be a bit more um, consistent and confident with how I'm actually going about trading that certain pair. So, so yeah, so, um, so yeah, so that's, that's my best advice when it comes to that. Thank you, for, thanks for the question. How many students are in your academy? I am dedicated to joining a little bit because I want to take the time and actually learn. No, you don't. You're a liar. You're a liar, you're a liar, you're a liar, liar. Um, what does the number of students inside Wall Street Academy, how does that benefit you? How? You gotta ask yourself that. How does knowing the amount of students in Wall Street Academy benefit you from making profit? You have, I show what, 3,800 photos on IG showing my entire journey. Take time to fucking scroll back. You don't need to know how many students are in Wall Street Academy. See the growth of the brand. See the growth of students that's a part of the brand. Search the hashtag Wall Street Academy. Search the hashtag Forever Profit. Learn about the business. What does knowing the, the amount of students inside the brand, how does that benefit you at all to even make profit? You're worried about the wrong things, bro. That's why you're not you know, making progress. You're worried about the wrong things. Worry about how can this benefit me? Like, what do I have to do to actually benefit from this brand or this person. Numbers is none of your business. Simple. Your advice on how to become a better trader, especially when you're doing a 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. shift job. Also, what's the right strategy to use when trading currency pairs, including Walling, Walling Street US 30? For one, um, like I said before, like when you're at work, that's not your time. That's not your time to grow at, as a person into a craft that you actually want to um, eventually get better at and leave that job. When you're at work, you clocked in, that's pretty much the business time. And that's the reality of the situation, which means that if you're, for example, you get caught doing something else at, at work that you're not supposed to, that has nothing to do with the business, more than likely you get, you know, some kind of citation or, or something, or like a, you know, slap on the, the hand or something like that from the manager or some shit. So I feel like um, work on your craft after your shift. Work on your craft when it's your time to actually get better. Work on, on your craft once you pretty much clock out you go home and now start to fucking grind so like the biggest thing like when it comes to um you know building a, a certain skill set in something is that knowing that it's not about what you do when you're at work it's about what you do after work it's about what you do when you're at home are you the person that's pretty much going home after work and sitting on your couch are you the person that's going home and just turn on a video game and just playing it thinking that, that that's going to get you better at trading or are you the person that pretty much get get out of work get straight up on the charts, get, get, get straight on the webinars, get straight on pretty much information that can pretty much help you better that certain craft. And, um, and you're being productive based off of you now getting off of that, that, um, you know, that hourly time that you have at work and you're putting time into yourself. So I feel like just knowing that like, hey, like once you get out of work, that's your time to actually grow as a person. And then once you pretty much get to a certain point, you could then, you know, eventually leave that job to focus on that certain skill set. So like, it's all about just like what, on what you do after work, not at work, okay? So that's how I would actually go about that. I was wondering if Forex is gambling. The reason why I asked that is because recently my friend from Dominica joined the Forex trade, but I have some doubt of it. I researched it and the trader, and it 
I researched it, and the trader is saying that forex is the ultimate form of gambling. I need your insights. People that say it's gambling is fucking idiots. Like straight up, like gambling is 50-50. That that's what gambling is. Gambling is is a 50% chance of doing something, right? Going to the casino is considered gambling. Like rolling a dice is considered gambling because you have no control over how much information that you might know about that dice. That cannot help you. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's a chance thing versus trading currencies or trading indexes, trading period. You have access to information that could pretty much give you better odds of winning um, while you're trading. That's not gambling. That's pretty much you know you basing something off of an analysis. It's all educated analysis to actually go about um, you know getting better at trading. You cannot look at information and get worse at trading. So I feel like you get more insight um, with trading that pretty much betters your chance of winning certain trades versus um, gambling. You cannot really do um, research and that kind of stuff. You can't look up a dice and um, see like, okay, a dice rolls like this and this and that, this and that, this and that. Like that does not get you better at um, rolling sixes every single time. You know what I'm saying? So like. Um, trading is definitely not, not a form of gambling. It's a, it's a craft that you can pretty much analyze and, and, and gain information from to better your odds at winning certain trades. Um, so definitely not gambling. It's, it's very educated. Yeah. Thanks for the question. I your wifey. I have chosen you as 30. Can okay. you please give me some advice on how I can better understand this pair? Things I can familiarize myself with in terms of news or analysis in order to better my trades. Okay. I've watched almost all your YouTube videos and they have helped me a lot. Thank you for putting them out there. Definitely. Um, like, like I said before, like when it comes to US 30, um, it's based off the top 30 stocks, which means that you have to now dabble in stocks a little bit, or even like doing research based off of those companies that are within that, you know, Dow Jones category. Um, I love going on investing.com, um, reading like, um, you know, headlines on news articles and that kind of stuff, pretty much seeing how certain things are affecting certain markets. And if things are getting better or worse, and that's what actually have, um, that's what gives me more insightful information to be able to actually confidently trade US 30 um, and know the, the direction of bias um, based off like what I'm, I'm analyzing from. So um, you have to just, you know, be able to actually dabble in stocks a, a bit more, um, know about the companies, know where to actually find certain information to, to then better your, your insight. Um, I like investing.com, I like um, Bloomberg, I like uh, um, Investopedia. Anything that um, that pretty much gives you news events or um, economic news based off of the, the um, Dow Jones platform, okay? So that's what I'll actually do to actually get get better um, insight like when it comes to trading US 30. Um, as far as technical analysis and whatnot, it's um, not too far off from how I actually trade currencies, but at the same time, you're dealing with a pair that moves like 10 times faster. So you gotta pretty much understand the lot sizes are gonna be a, a bit different than the lot sizes on currencies and how you actually you know, go about um, time, um, time frames and how you go about um, time periods that you pretty much trade in that period is gonna move at a different time based off of it being based off stocks. You know what I'm saying? Which means that you know, 11 p.m. Eastern time at, at night is not gonna really be moving on US 30 because the stock market pretty much closed. It's gonna start pushing at like around 8.30 um, Eastern time and then go from there until the, the pretty much stock, uh, until the stock market closes um, and then the volatility of those certain stocks are um, decreased. So that's how I actually go about that. And um, yeah, just like dig in, um, do a lot of research on that. Um, take time out of your morning to pretty much do research on the on Dow Jones platform. Um, so when it comes to your technical side, you're a bit more insightful on the direction of bias. All right, thanks. Uh, platform anymore? So I've been using a parallel Microsoft desktop program that I downloaded. What do you use, or is it another way to have MT4 without the experts, or do I just have to switch to Windows? Okay, so there's two ways on how you could actually go about it. Um, based on the Mac platform, once you actually got to the, the Catalina version of, um, of Mac, um, that's when MT4 is not being supported based off of the um, bits. I, I think it's like 64 bits versus being at 32 bits. Um, so the platform couldn't work anymore on the Catalina platform, but if you have a Mac that you upgraded to Catalina 2, um, then you're able to downgrade um, to you know El Capitan and or like any other firmware that's pretty much below that Catalina platform. So like once you pretty much you know downgrade that laptop or the iMac, then you're able to actually use MT4 again. But if you buy a brand new MacBook or like iMac and it comes with 
Catalina, then you can't downgrade because you didn't upgrade to that new version. So I feel like um, if you have, if you're in one of those situations, you could actually either downgrade or you could use the, the web platform, um, which certain brokers actually offer to actually you know trade on. But the thing with that, with the web platform, you cannot install indicators, you can't install templates, which kind of sucks also because you can't have a sexy chart. So that's the downside of that. If you go the Windows route, um, the only downside of that is that um, trading view is not going to look as crisp. So I feel like, um, like when it comes to trading, like I mean, I've been using my Mac for years and years and years and years and years. Um, just recently, I've been trading a lot more on my Windows versus my um, MacBook because um, I have a new iMac, so I can't downgrade. So I just have to deal with it and um, you know just use my Windows to actually run everything because um, the MP4 platform is still supported 100% on the Windows platform versus a little bit of headache on the, the Mac platform until they actually come out with a some kind of update, you know, but till then, um, either use the web version or get a uh, Windows to actually, you know, um, trade on. But the downside of that is gonna be the quality of the resolution when it comes to trading view. So yeah. Cost of supercar. Okay. Obviously Clan just wanted to know how much goes into the cost of generally, percent of car price, and how to go about the buying process, leveraging finance, dealing with deprecation things like that mm -hmm. and even non super cards like just getting an m3 on lease like you mentioned before because of their deprecation instead maybe even what cars usually hold value versus ones that drop like rocks yeah that's a, a, a dope question because i mean like i'm a car guy i've always been a car guy my entire life i'm going from a kid playing cruising inside of the usa gran turismo one two three four five six um midnight club racing like so you know, the, the car question is pretty cool because like that's a passion of mine. So I feel like, you know, people that have that same passion, um, you have to actually you know how to actually go about things so you could um, save money and do it right. So when it comes to certain supercars, um, buying and leasing is the most important, you know, decision, right? Um, when it comes to supercars, if you lease, you can't have fun with the car. So um, that's why I like my Lambo, I put half down of, of the car's full value. So I, I pretty much can say like, I really wanted a car versus putting the, the bare minimum. I wanna like, I wanna pretty much knock out as much of, of that car's equity as much as possible. So I can make payments and not stress about it, you know, based off of that and build credit at the same time. Um, only because that car holds value. So those kind of cars you can't really lease because they're already, you know, a 2017 or 2016 car. Um, so you have to pretty much want the car. The Ferrari, really wanted a car. I don't want to pretty much use credit, that kind of stuff. So it's paid outright, right? My M3, um, I put down the, it was like what, like a, let's say like at a time it was like $85,000. I put down only like like $5,000, $6,000. And that means that my payment was like about $800, $900 a month, right? Now M3s or M4s, they're going for like about 84,000. Um, I mean, no, no, I'm 54,000, but um, you can't lease them anymore because I had leased mines but only because they drop in value. Like, as you can see, it dropped from 80,000 plus to now being only being worth um, 50,000, you know, like around that price range in just a couple years. So it didn't really make sense to even, you know, buy that car out outright knowing that, you, that you're gonna lose a lot of money on the car. So that's, that's the kind of car that you pretty much just drive and, and don't really care about because it doesn't really hold value. That's not one of those cars that you pretty much hold um, for equity in the future and whatnot. You pretty much just, get it and drive it, drive it out and you know, just give it away and that kind of stuff. So with the M3, I'll say, um, if it's like, let's say a 50,000 for the M3, you know, put down, and, and now the leasing is not an option, right? Put down, let's say half of the car's value um, and then pretty much, you know, finance the rest of the car. So you pretty much are building credit at the same time versus not getting any kind of benefits from even, um, you know, driving the car, you know, cause when you buy a car outright, it's not, benefiting credit at all, all right? Going the route of a new M3, I feel like would, would be the best bet because for one, you're getting a brand new car, for two, you're getting zero miles, for three, um, you're still kind of paying like a similar amount, the car monthly payments that, that you would with a car that is now um, used. So you're getting a brand new car, you're putting like the bare minimum down, but remember like when it comes to leases, you're putting a percent down of the overall car value. So like if you, if, a, if an M3 costs, 85,000 brand new, you're only gonna be financing, let's say $30,000 worth of the car. So like that's gonna be the the, the, the lease agreement versus financing 85,000 for the entire car. You know, so like you're, you're only financing a certain portion of the car um, with the leases and you could pretty much get like 
um, at least for 10,000 miles a year and not stress about it because you know that the car is going to be fun for the time being, but at the same time, you, you don't want to keep that car and own it. So going to the lease route, you can have a brand new car, have, have your fun, give it away. And if you really want a car back, you could pretty much, you know, either, you know, buy it inside the future for like at a lower price for like a used version and, um, you know, save a, a lot of money that way. So um, with the M3s and that kind of stuff, like, you know, just understand that like the lease options on, on those cars could be really, really good and you can still have your fun. You can still modify it. You can put exhaust, your suspension. You could put all the, you know, upgrades that, that you want to. I mean, don't change the, the, the motor now, but at the same time, you could do like, you know, e enough upgrades to actually have fun with the car and, um, you know, not be paying a shit ton of money and um, holding on to a liability at that point. So I'll definitely say go the lease route, like when it comes to a car that is just like for driving and fun versus a car that is, um, is meant to be held for, you know, um, investment purposes or to gain equity over time, or it's a collector's edition type car. So supercars versus like that, that everyday car that, that you could, you know, wreck a miles on it and not care about it. There's definitely different ways on how to actually go about it because it's either you go the supercar route that you really want the car to actually put half, half the money down for the car or pay the, or pay it off, or you get a car that pretty much you're gonna say, fuck it, like I'll run up the miles and not care. Go the lease route, a brand new car, and you get like a dope ass lease agreement um, and not pay a shit ton of money um, and not hold on to that liability for too long. Trading account. I will not lie and tell you some soft story. The truth is that I do not come from a rich family, but we are not living on the streets, and for that I'm grateful. Now you're probably thinking, why did I message you? I want you to know that I have this dying wish to be successful like you one day, and I wanted you to help me achieve that. I have a passion for trading. I love it. Everything about it excites me. Whether it's entering a swing trade or playing the waiting game or watching how crazy the markets can be on NFP. I love trading just like you do and that's something we have in common. Would you please be so kind to fund me an account? It would mean the world to me. As if I'm not old enough to qualify for a job and I would really be able to help my mother out this way. Um, you don't want it bad enough. Um, you don't want it bad enough because um, I was never the person to pretty much you know, ask for a handout to fund my trading account. You could do a lot of things to make money without having a job. You could, you know, have that entrepreneur type mindset and you know sell candy. Because that's what I was doing like back in, in high school and unlocking iPhones and unlocking um, PSPs and jailbreaking PSPs and like there's other ways on how to make money than a job. You know what I'm saying? So like you know don't don't hit me with that soft story. Um, it's not the way on how to go to actually become a successful entrepreneur. Because if you are wanting to be a successful entrepreneur, you will figure it out. Um, and don't ask for handouts because when you figure it out, you deserve to be successful versus the person that, ha that has a handout, you know, they're not experiencing or even growing into the person that pretty much are, is ready for that level of success because they were just given handouts and they didn't, you know, actually gain the experience that they needed to actually have a stronger mindset to actually, you know, make money some other way than a job to then reinvest it into what they actually want to reinvest into. So, um, you know, for the soft stories, man, it's either you, you, you get on your shit or you get, you know, you don't get to where you want to be, you know, simple as that. So get on your shit, man. No handouts. There with analyzing the market, but I still really struggle with my mindset and overall confidence. Hmm? I understand that with time comes development, but how do I realistically overcome the fear, the sadness and anger that can come with trading? I really want to succeed, but I fuck up sometimes by jumping the gun and not getting in. But overall, my analysis is more times right. After years of trading, could you please tell me what type of advice that you wish that you could have told yourself or what you would have said or recommend to anyone struggling with the mental aspect of trading? Um, keep on going. You know, like I've, I've blown tons of accounts. I've lost tons of money. Um, but the difference between a person that's pretty much successful in trading and not successful in trading is either you get a loss and you understand what happened with that loss and how it could actually became a win or how you could have understood that move a lot more or you get a loss and you start crying. You know what I'm saying? It's either that, it's, 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 it's binary. It's either you try to understand where you went wrong to fix it for next time or you just give up and just start, you know, crying wolf and that kind of shit. So I feel like um, it's not about um, the advice all too, too much. It's about, you know, you, you being strong minded and then and then pretty much wanted to keep on going and um, you know, taking accountability for your actions like when it comes to trading, your losses, your wins, like take accountability. Like, why did you do this? Why did you do that? You know, and then um, just understanding what 
went wrong and what you should have done based off of your level of, of education. Because if you're not basing everything off of your, your education, then you're not gonna really grow anywhere. So I feel like invest in, the, in education, invest in something that could actually get your mindset right. Um, I love Gary Vee. I love people that pretty much, you know, speak on mindset and you know, speak on greed and speak on, you know, having the drive to just want to keep on going regardless of how many times that um, that you fail. Um, but you can't actually just say, you know, you're gonna, um, you're like sad and that kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? Like losing is a part of the game. You're gonna lose, 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 lose until you pretty much understand why you're losing. And then you're tweaking that. Like trading is all about tweaking. You know what I'm saying? Like, even like with the way I trade, it's literally, I'll have, Tons of losses, loss, 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 and then pretty much after every single loss, I'm understanding what went wrong. And um, next time around that similar situation arises, um, my my eyes are a bit more trained now to pretty much you know go about things a bit differently. That um, would have you know turned it into a loss again. So um, yeah, so that's how I, I'll actually go about that personally. The question for you is on time management. How do you manage your daily schedule while trading? You're constantly updating social media with forex tips, responding to an insane amount of comments slash questions, and make time to enjoy yourself with friends and family while trading successfully. How? Um, time management is key. Um, like you said, um, knowing how much time you want to pretty much spend on a certain you know um, area of your day, which is the most important thing. Like I, I wake up. For one, I, I'm engulfed in what I, in like what I do. You know what I'm saying? So I wake up. Um, let's say like, let's say like around 7:30. Um, instantly, I'm on the charts. I probably already have trades in from the um, that current night. Um, I have trades in that I'm pro probably even um, analyzing and trying to trying to maintain. After that, you know, I get up. I'm on the computer for a couple hours. I, I'm knocking out. You know as much computer work as possible it could be answering emails it could be answering ig messages it could be um you know certain comments that you know i want to respond to i'm pretty much i'm pretty much putting time into the media aspect of things so like i i put time towards all those things so everything can be satisfied there are certain times that i don't get everything done you know but um i mean i take accountability for that by the same time it's not as if anything that i do has to be done in a timely manner you know, so, um, you know, either write down what has to get done for that day, make phone calls, make texts, pretty much, you know, do everything out um, and have it all scheduled. E either I'm going to the gym and then after the gym, I'm, I'm, I'm meeting up with, with Danny for like a video. And then, you know, like everything's pretty much on a schedule. But um, times that is between that, um, the family aspect of things is is always there. So I can still family time and still knock out certain emails and that kind of stuff. So like, I feel like since I work so digitally, um, me spending time with family and friends and that kind of stuff doesn't really slow me down too, too much unless I have to actually be somewhere at, at a certain time for a certain reason. Um, so me being able to actually work digitally, I could, you know, do two things at once and pretty much keep in contact with people on Instagram and, and post and that kind of stuff. But I don't have to be at a certain place to pretty much post or a certain place to to answer a certain email and that kind of stuff. So everything's on my phone, um, but I try to actually prioritize how much time I'm spending in a certain area. Like if I go see a friend, um, I don't want to spend all day there. I'm only going to be there probably for a couple hours or some kind of like that because I have other things that I have to get done or people that I have to meet. So every day is kind of like just you know clockwork, and um, based around all that, um, you know, family can still be, you know. Um, I can still have my, my, my quality time with um, Macy and my daughter and that kind of stuff. So it's not as if I'm locking everything out and I can't take on more tasks and spend time because I have to be somewhere. So since it's digital, I feel like it makes it a lot more easier um, to just, you know, still get better in interacting with people that I care about and that kind of stuff. So I feel like um, since it took me five, six years to, you know, get accustomed to that schedule, which is just very, very demanding. Um, I, I still haven't mastered that schedule, but I try very, very hard to um, to make sure that I knock out as much super important things as, as, as possible. Like um, I have important things like um, computer work, um, gym, you know, just so I could actually maintain um, a certain lifestyle, you know? So I try to make sure that those four or five things that has to be done um, is executed as much as possible. If I miss one or two things, that's fine. 
but it's not as if it's based off of a um, a timeline. Like I, I don't have to you know do it every single day. But at the same time, if I do do it, I'm I'm getting better as as a person. So it's kind of like a perk. So yeah, so it's all about just like understanding like what are the what things have to 100% get done every single day, focusing on on those things throughout the entire day, and between those things, you're spending time with family and um, people that you care about. Yeah. So that's pretty much um about it. All right. Yeah, so that's about it. I'm not too sure how many questions I was. I think that's like about 15 questions. Um, hopefully, you know, that information helped you, like how I actually gave my insight and that kind of stuff based off experience. Um, hopefully, people can actually, you know, take that information and um, take action, you know, because a person can talk all day, but at the same time, if you're not taking action based off of it, um, advice that you're getting, you're not really doing anything from it. So, um, you know, use the information, you know, you know, make the best out of it. And um, I mean, you too can, you know, reach all of your goals that, that you put your, your mind to and just actually put an effort every single day towards you know a certain craft that you actually want to get better at and yeah man um that's about it but thanks everyone for the questions i love them a lot and um, i'm gonna see you guys on the next youtube video peace peace